What's up, guys? This is Andy from Freeform Radio on the Freeform Network. You're wondering, why is Andy the only one talking, and where's the music? We want to hear that deep bass line. Why the hell is Andy talking? Well, the reason I'm talking, guys, is because it was my week to edit this week's episode. And on the process of editing the episode, we had some technical difficulties that we did not know about while recording. So hence, here I am talking. Um, but... All our technical experience in engineering uh, know-how led us to this week's episode. Uh, we tried to our best. You might notice Danny's voice is normal or high, and I'm low to lower. And I tried to do the best I can in the editing um, process of the episode. So this is the final product. Um we still want you to listen. We thought it was a pretty interesting conversation between uh, me and Danny. Um, but I don't mind talking to you guys by myself. Maybe down the road, who knows? Might be the Andy one-off special or the Andy show. No, guys. But seriously, I'm here. Danny's going to be here. You're going to hear him in a little bit. We want to thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting us. And we promise and promise you guys, we're really working on improving the quality of the show. We know it has gone down a little bit with the Skype, but we are desperately working on improving that, guys. So, again, listen to the show. As always, any engineers out there, fellow podcasters got some tips uh, to help us out. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, so, here you go, guys. Enjoy. Damas y caballeros, welcome back to Freeform Radio on the Freeform Network. Remember, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and send in those questions, man. We love hearing from all of you guys. But again, this is Freeform Radio. My name is Daniel. I'm here today with... Andy back from the cloud or something. I've been slacking off lately. Yeah, man. It's been a, a busy couple weeks. It's been tough trying to connect in these busy lives, how is it over there in the in the 708, Andy? Or what's your area code over there, man? It doesn't matter. Should I just say 312? Because I think all our Chicago people would understand. But Yeah, I thought I saw your sister post something on Facebook that said, uh, I live like uh, 15 minutes away from Chicago, but I tell people I'm from Chicago. <laughs> that's the thing. You know, you know, that's one of my things right now. I went to... Uh, craft brewery thing at, at the Brookfield Zoo. Uh, not to get sidetracked here, Danny. I know we had a game plan, but this is Freeform Network, so we just spit out shit whenever we, we think about it. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, we need that Geico horn. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I went to the zoo brew, and uh, me and my wife were joining these exotic liquors, and uh, you know, we were, our, our white brethren are there, which they're fun to see when they're drinking. But the Latino community wasn't really representing, which I, I take it as I just want to get fucked up. I don't care what I'm drinking type of attitude. Like, uh, you put Budweiser in front of me, I'll fucking drink it, or I'll put King Cobra 40s. Uh, but there was a handful of uh, Latinos, I guess. Is that, is that proper now? I don't even know. I might be offending people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, so uh, I never done that brew thing at the zoo. How is it? Do they give you like a big glass or or what? How's that thing so, work? Yeah, we signed up. It's sixty five bucks. They give you like an eight ounce eight ounce cup, like uh, yeah, like a know. shot glass or what is that? Like a uh, like a half a glass? Like half a quarter of a pint. Because a pint was sixteen ounces. So it's like the the glasses that the like uh half you. A can. So six ounce, I'm guessing. Okay, all right. So you go to these breweries, these local breweries, they, they, they fill it up for you. You drink it, you're like, oh, this is disgusting, oh, this is awesome. And then you go to the next one, and then they are there's like washing stations with water so you can clear the cup. Or you could be a uh, savage, as the kids say, and just fucking pound, go to the next uh, setup and tell them, fill me up, buddy. And then they either have like mini kegs or they have like cans or bottles there. 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a connoisseur of beer, so I would have to rinse it off so it wouldn't mess my palate and maybe eat a few bananas. Uh, the, the hardcore people, they take pretzels. They put pretzel necklaces. Pretzels, wow. Yeah, and then so to cleanse their palate, Danny, you know, do you, do you know what the word palate is? I know you're, you went to yeah. college. Yeah, but I, I thought it was uh, bananas because I thought it was uh, you eat a banana to kind of clean up your, your tongue. The same text is that Brazil, so um, uh, they don't – I don't know. Maybe you should, but everybody had pretzels, and my wife said, should I make nuts, uh, pretzel uh, necklaces? And I'm like, I don't want to be that guy, so <laughs> no. <laughs> so we're walking around, and we're enjoying all our exotic beers, and like I said, uh, like – me being me, I'm like, man, there's a lot of white people around here. Sweet. I feel safe. Unless there's a, a white woman with a telephone and sunglasses, then I get a little scared. And oh, well, the sunglasses is the way to go, man. That way you can keep your peripheral vision going, you know, kind of check, scope out what's going on. And then uh, the wifey's none too wiser. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. So we're there. <laughs> and then this guy kind of bumped into me. I'm going to say he, he was a Latino gentleman. So that's when you're like, what's your set, man? Where are you from? I'm like, what you be about, you know? I'm like, uh-huh. Uh, old school street thing. And he's like, he apologized. So immediately I didn't back down. I got, I fucking started uh, getting rough. I'm like, man, fuck you, man, you know? But I was like, my wife controlled me. I'm civilized now. Like, yeah, yeah. They were like EAD, man. Pretty much. I'm like, oh, man, I'm from the J, motherfucker. Represent. <laughs> I was talking to him, and he's like, yeah, man, you know, it's great to see another Latino person. And I'm like, this guy don't look Mexican to me. So uh, right away, he's like, I'm from Humble Park. So he's like, oh, he's Puerto Rican, right? So I'm like, oh, man. And then, <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. But uh, we, I started talking to him, and we started talking about, man, there's a lot of white people here. And then. He brought over, I guess, his cousins and his wife. Now, this guy looked like he was in late 20s, and he already had, like, three kids, which was uh, interesting. <laughs> so did, did he have his kids with him, or he came solo? He came solo with his wife. But his wife was Mexican, and then she started berating him, saying... Damn, like in front of you? Yeah, me in front of me and my wife. I told you not to drink this fucking much, cursing and stuff. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like... This is uh, an interesting take here. And um, so, yeah, we were bullshitting. He brought over his cousins. We were drinking. And they were, the cousins were, like, very beer conscious, I guess. They knew all the breweries. They were pushing this one beer. And uh, it was interesting. That, like I said, I didn't see too many uh, uh, Latinos there. And it just reinforces what I already knew, which is, they, they don't they're not kind of uh, the latino community is not a kind of sewer of fine uh liquors or beers i think anything you put in front of us i, I think we'll drink without hesitation and without complaint yeah and they, when you, when you grow up drinking uh mad dog and ice house and you know cobra like you said <laughs> i guess you don't develop that sophisticated palate you know started with sam adams and then from there i ventured out to other stuff and i'm gonna give you this a lot of crap beers are fucking crap but once in a while you do find uh, a good beer and you're like this is what i think beer should taste like uh the only problem is after you taste that beer at these crap shows they're very hard to find because it's such a niche market and they're not part of the the big distributorships like anheuser bush and the, and the, the coors miller and it becomes very hard to find. You have to go to, like, Binnie's. I don't want to be a Binnie's guy. Uh, and they're like, oh, we could order that beer for you. I'm like, eh, it's kind of weird to me. But uh, Yeah, I know Binnie's got a bunch of different ones. I've seen, like, um, Trader Joe's got, like, a, a bunch of, like, different, like, uh, independent ones. Uh, same thing with that other one, uh, Whole Foods. Anywhere, like, those... You see, like, those single-crafted, you know, like the Corral beer or whatever, you know. It's like some guy that, you know, makes beer in his backyard or in, in his garage. You're telling me if uh, we 
like if Anheuser Busch or the Miller Coors conglomerates came to Freeform Network, they're like, we want to put out a beer in your name, and they slap our logo on it, but the beer tasted like shit. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I would maybe get a koozie that has Freeform Network on it, but then have another beer inside of it. So you're saying you're not going to take uh, that big conglomerate beer money? Well, we could hide it, man. Just hide it inside there or just put a paper bag around it and say that it is Freeform Network. Right? Our logo, and then they put it over like Keystone Light or Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's my nightmare right there. But I'm not saying maybe we should think about it and do it. Yeah, yeah, I hear that, man. I hear that. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, that that's uh, that was one of my big things. And lately, I st- I've been, I guess I've been drinking too much damn beer and not having enough time. Uh, I've been wanting to go check out some movies. This, you know, it's the summer. Officially, summer started on a shitty rainy day last week. But I've been trying to watch. The only movie I saw seen this summer so far is the Avengers: uh, Infinity War. And yeah, I think everybody's seen that one. Yeah, apparently the billion dollars, everybody see it across the world, I think twice. But everything else that came out afterwards, I just haven't had time, man. Like, I wanted to go see Deadpool. I wanted to go see Solo so I could shit on it, even though everybody says it's – some people are saying it's awesome. Um, I wanted to see, the, you know, like I said, the Deadpool and the Ant-Man one, which is coming out this week. Uh, the Jurassic Park, my wife wants to go see it. I'm not really like, eh, like I'm not really up for it, um, and I do want to see Ready Player One, but I think it's already out streaming services, so we'll see how. The, uh, I gotta make some time. I, I think I'm gonna try to make some time this weekend. Me and my wife, before I jump down, we're talking about maybe going to the movies and try to see. She wants to see Jurassic Park, but I do not want to see that. Yeah, Lana's a big Jurassic Park movie. Uh, she really digs it, though, especially the original. If it's ever on TV, she has to stop and watch it. It's one of those like Karate Kid movies that when you see it playing, you just got to stop and, and you know scope it out. He said, but, advice to all you single guys, if you want to, to get laid, go see a Jurassic Park movie. Oh, man. The women love the freaking dinosaurs. I don't know if it's Star-Lord. Yeah, she really digs the first one, and uh, she even likes the ones after that. But I think it got kind of, I don't know, I, it went off the rails a little bit on uh, two or three or four. I don't know how many they did before they got uh, Chris Pratt to come in and, and kind of not reboot it, but kind of give it a fresh, fresher look at it. Well, I think th- I think they make mention of the first one because it's a, a sequel. It happens after the events of the first one, so they make mention of um, I forget the doctor's name and and the guy that originally made it. <laughs> the guy from uh, uh, not not the or well, the guy that from the fly, the yeah. Charles Bronson guy, the bug guy guy. Thor was. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thor. Chicks on a, on a spaceship or something. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, him. Um, the only cool part about him, he was trying to get laid in the first one or the second one. I don't even remember. And uh, but I think he makes a. Did he make a cameo in the other one? I don't even remember. That's how forgettable that movie is to me. He might have at the end. You know, given his his one line that's really famous, like you know. Where there's a will, there's a way. If even though they're all girl dinosaurs, they're gonna find a way to do it. They're gonna scissor it till it comes out. Uh huh, something like that. But uh, yeah, Jurassic Park. I'm gonna probably go check it out because I know Alana really digs it. But um, I got a couple movies. What was that? Does Junior like it? Yeah, yeah, he kind of digs Jurassic Park. I mean, uh, big dinosaurs, uh, especially because I think in the trailers they kind of show that. The dinosaurs make it onto the mainland, you know, kind of like always. They always make it onto the mainland and kind of start harassing the real people and breaking into houses and stuff, you know, start playing your PlayStation. And now, wouldn't it be cool if, like, Godzilla made an appearance and starts, like, fucking them up? Like, King 
Kong, like he texted him, text him in King Kong. I I did read something about that that King Kong, you know how they did the that soft reboot of him too, and then uh, I no, not the Jack Samuel Black, Jackson. the 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 one after that, yeah, with Samuel Jackson. Well, it's Kong, but then uh, I, I guess there's. I've been reading a few articles that they might bring Godzilla into that universe and, and finally bring them both together. I mean, I seen the King Kong man a long time ago. I saw what King Kong versus Godzilla like in the '60s, right? Remember seeing that? Like, yeah, yeah. Corny as fuck, but man, that's a classic. But yeah, I'm with you, man. I I've been wanting to watch Deadpool too. I haven't seen it, man, and it looks good and it's like right up my alley. It was one of those movies that uh, Alana didn't, you know, she's not really a superheroes movie kind of girl. Uh, but when I showed her Deadpool 1, man, she was cracking up and she was like, yeah, that was actually pretty good. It was pretty funny. Yeah, Deadpool 2, was like, I feel like it just came and went, right? Like it did a bunch of money the first couple of weeks and you never hear about it again. The only time I see a Deadpool is when I walk to 7-Eleven and he's trying to get me to buy a Slurpee or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a while, he was on everything. He was uh, for their promotion. They were redoing DVD covers, so uh, like they redid the Logan DVD cover, and they had uh, Deadpool grabbing Logan's hand, and uh, they redid a bunch of like um, I forget which ones off the top of my head now, but just a bunch of iconic DVD covers that you look at and you're like, yeah, that's that movie. Yeah, yeah. Like DVD slip covers, so you can slip it over your DVD, and then it'll be a new cover with Deadpool on it. Yeah, that, like I said, uh, I, uh, I remember there was a big marketing push for it, um, but I know they had problems when they started filming that movie. I think from there, it kind of turned me off because they fired or the original director left, the one that made it with them, and I think uh, Ryan Reynolds himself like took over. I don't know what the deal is, but after that, I was like, oh, man, this movie looks like it might suck, but I haven't really heard anything about it. Yeah, that movie's got a, a few controversies because, I mean, uh, even that guy, the actor, the one that's, like, kind of his best friend, oh, he, like, wow. called in, a, like, a bomb threat or something, and, and then uh, he's just like, yeah, I was just playing around. And, oh, the comedian and, guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and now they supposedly he's not going to be or he's not in this part or something. I forgot what happened. I don't know if they cut him out completely because I haven't seen the new Deadpool, but they either cut him out or he's not going to be in part three or whatever. But, yeah, I know he he created a big ruckus uh, about calling in that bomb threat. So, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's one of the movies I want to try to see, but I know my wife's not going to like it. So all that leaves me with is Solo and – my gut is like in uh, everything. I'm a big Star Wars fan, but every fiber of my being as a Star Wars fan is to go in there and just shit on that movie, Danny. And I don't know if, uh, like, do I just pay uh, the matinee price just to go in there and say this movie fucking sucks? I, I don't think it. I haven't seen it, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. I think. People are just kind of burnt out, man. It's like a Star Wars movie every year now, which for fanatics, maybe it's okay. But for like casual, somewhat like Star Wars fans, maybe they're kind of burnt out. And then people who are like, you know, kind of far away fans, you know, they, they, they're they probably watching only like the main movies and not really these side movies. So uh, I don't know. I don't know why people are crapping it because uh, the few people that I know that went to go see it, they they said it was a pretty good movie. But I know the majority are are crapping on it. They're saying it's not that good of a movie. Are those the same people that say that every Star Wars movie is the best movie ever made? <laughs> I have I have not talked to Efren about it, uh, <laughs> so I'm not really sure if he thinks it's the greatest Star Wars movie ever, but. I, I mean, from the trailers, it looked half decent, and uh, I've always liked that solo character. I've always thought he's really intriguing, so um, I don't know if it's going to get corny or kind of, you know, like predictable where you're going to see the beats coming up. You know, it's like those typical movies, but uh, I, I, I'm going to I'm I'm going to go check it out, uh, but I'm, I'm probably with you. I'll probably 
wait until it's on a matinee or or it's at a red box. Hey. Yeah, not not fucking the fonts. <laughs> oh yeah, not the fonts. <laughs> the guy that lives downstairs from him, the redheaded fuck. And uh-huh. you're just like, man. Hey, speaking of Richie Cunningham, when is, when is he just gonna take that hat off, man? Everybody knows he's bald. Why do people do that, man? When you're bald and you wear a hat all the time, everybody knows the deal. It's not like, oh my god, maybe this guy's got hair. People have seen you, dude. Take the hat off. It's cool, man. <laughs> I mean, so I think out of the three, the hat's the coolest option. Sure. Nah, but he he wears some nasty hats like those. I I don't know, man. I hate to say it, but it's like one of those like white people hats, like it's kind of like broken down, and it's like you know like a car ran over it. And I'm like, dude, like get at least a hard, crisp hat, man. You know, like man, you just came out of lids with it, kind of thing. You know, like man, like you're blinging it, man. You're Yeah, but it's the, the cap <laughs> representing an armed service like the navy or the army or some shit. But you're like, nah, man, fuck that. Get, I think you should just do a comb over. <laughs> does can't he? Does he usually wear like uh like those navy hats and stuff? Yeah, like the USS Indianapolis or the USS uh, Arizona. I guess I've never paid that close of attention to what's on it. I just I just see that it's all like broken down and kind of like half folding in half. And I'm just like, dude, man, at least get a decent hat, man, if you're going to be wearing it. <laughs> Come on, man. Give Richie Cunningham a break, man. I mean, it, he's the, the Fonz's BFF. Even though he left. What an asshole. He left. And happy days. He ditched the Fonz. Would you ditch the Fonz? I think I would have hanged out with him a little bit. Longer. I don't know, man. He did jump to Shark Tank, so I think I, w- I would still be his friend. Man, you think kids know what the hell happy days is? Uh, probably not, Andy. You're dating yourself now. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i don't got super uh memories of it but i i do recall it uh i do recall that first it was uh mr miyagi and then uh it jumped over to al i think well, miyagi was al. oh yeah first it was miyagi and then who was the yeah and then who was the other guy did they call him al too yeah oh okay <laughs> there you go. They would have had like an accent like superiorly super diverse in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, Richie Cunningham directed Solo. And like I said, I want to see it just so I could come out in the next week in the next podcast and go, and go, yeah, it fucking sucked. I want my money back. And I can't blame George Lucas no more. And. If you see everything on, on the internet, everybody just has a hard on for Star Wars and shitting on it from like from Rogue One down. Every fucking Star Wars movie that came out after that, people are just constantly shitting on it. So, and then that even scared uh, the performance of Solo scared Disney Star Wars. You know, rumors that they canceled a lot of the spin off movies and all this other shit. So, who knows what they're going to do? Yeah, I know, man. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm I'm hoping it's gonna be good. Uh, I'm not too terribly worried about it. Dan, don't you get passionate about shit in movies? Nah, I admit it, it, it. To be honest, when I see all those memes and stuff like that, I'm just like, man, this is like mean spirited, man. This is. I'm like, man, I. I mean, I don't want to seem like a snowflake or anything like that, but man, it's like, you know. Why is everybody just got to shit on shit, man? Why can't people, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all? In 30 years, we're going to be podcasting about how in the early ox, I don't even know what fucking tens, people are like, yeah, people were just shitters. They shitted on people. And then maybe the people that come after us, they're going to be like super nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, even a guy at work told me the other day, he's like, Danny, why are you always smiling? Why are you always nice? You know, people see that and they see it as weakness. And I'm like, I don't know. Is that weakness? Yeah, right. It is in today's generation, at least. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. If it's like that, like weird hap- happy face, you know, like, man, you just, you know, came out of a porno shop and you feel uncomfortable. So you got like this big smiley face on your face. Creepy, that is creepy. That, but to me, I think I got like a normal, regular smiley face, you know. Does your wife say, oh, baby, you're always so happy. Why? I think she actually gets pissed off that I have a happy smile on my face. And she's like, look at this motherfucker, man. Always happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my family is a big part of this smile that I carry every day, Andy. Oh man, that's what, that's that's good to hear, man. At least you're you're happy. But I don't know. That's not what I heard during lunch today. <laughs> so yeah, during lunch you were making mention of uh, the vacation, man. So so where are you going? And and man, are you are we gonna be doing a podcast from your vacation spot or what's going on? Yeah, I don't think the place I'm going has a strong Wi-Fi. Oh, all right. So, honeymoon i went to cabo which was sweet uh we're gonna go back there for one the one year anniversary because we completed one year like a couple weeks ago and uh she was like you gotta take me back because she wants to go to the arch or el arco and uh the beach for uh, the lo- uh, the lover's beach la playa de amores de los amorados so uh, we want to go there. That's one of the reasons we're going back. But other than that, the, the resort we're staying is pretty sweet. We're going to a different resort. And uh, it's all you can eat, drink, and fuck. Um, but it's the same resort, but a different side, right? No, it's a different resort. Oh, a different we resort completely. Last minute, we were talking about going to the same resort. But one of the reasons we picked this one because it's closer to town. And, okay. And uh, it's easier for us to go, do, go into town uh, and do... Cause there's shit to do in town. There's a Cabo's a, a big party town. We do that for at least we want to try that for like maybe a night or two. Instead of just just staying in the resort. So this uh, beach de amor is it like a nude beach or what's the deal with it? So el arco, the arch is like this uh, natural. Is it as big as the arc at St. Louis or? That's what I picture. You're telling me El Arco. I'm like, I'm picturing like this big archway from like the St. Louis one. Yeah, that, that's, that's a big fucking arch. So now this one is a, an arc, un arco. I want to say arco, but it's, you know, for, for not speaking Spanish people, the arch. Not the McDonald's arch, but like an arch. And when you think of an arch, you know, you know, you know what I'm thinking of the McDonald's arch, but just half of the McDonald's arch. But naturally that was formed by the waves of the water. So it's like a big, a big tourist. I don't want to say touristy, but it, it is like a they, they they plug it as like a natural phenomenon type of thing. Like it's kind of cool because the waves made it. And then there's a beach there, and uh, a lot of people go there because it's you have to take uh, a boat to get onto that. You just can't walk over there. And you gotta do you gotta pay the the DFA cops and stuff to get there or what, man? Like the kinds from Italy with uh, those paddle boat guys. I don't know if you've ever been on the ocean. The waves are a little rough. They take like a little a schooner or like they just put you in some uh, not pila paddling. <laughs> they, <just laughs> they put a motor at the end of it and you pay your ten bucks. They dump you off and they take somebody back. Nah, the the biggest ocean I've been in, in Andy, is uh, called Lake Michigan. Yeah, that, that's a lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this uh, an all-inclusive one like last time? All-inclusive. We booked it through, uh, you know, when you think of, uh, do anything, think of Costco first. Uh, it's one of their slogans, and I can't believe I'm saying that because anything I do now, I think of Costco first because they have so many fucking options, so many things that they offer that people don't know about. You can buy a damn car through Costco if you want. Yeah, man, condoms, get a- 
condo boxes. Yeah. That's that's the best part, man. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I don't need this stuff, man. I'm Superman. Um, but otherwise, going back to the vacation, yeah, man, it's uh, it's all inclusive. All you can eat, they have restaurants in the resort. You just make a reservation. You go there when you're supposed to, and you don't gotta pay. You just gotta tip everyone. And if you're a good tipper, those people are gonna take care of you. So all the people that work, the staffs gonna take care of you. Yeah, man, you were telling me about these cups that you saw last time when you were out there drinking. What what, what kind of cups were they using? So when we went on my honeymoon, uh, I noticed a lot of the American tourists, uh, they had these uh, like, uh, Yeti, these tumblers. like those. The Yeti? The Yeti, as one of our podcasters likes to say. Uh, and I'm like, man, why are all these people got these huge-ass cups, these insulated tumblers and you know, metal? And a lot of them said Yeti. Or yet high. And I'm like, well, excuse me, like, why did you bring that? They, well, they fill it up with booze or liquor instead of those little, like, normal size cups. So they bring like a, a Dixie cup? cup? No, like, uh, like a uh, pint glass, you know? You oh, okay, glass. that's what they usually give yeah, it to you in? Yeah, and I'm just like, they bring in these, like, 40-ounce tumblers and 32-ounce tumblers. So these people are getting, like, fucking blasted, and the, the staff fills it up for you. And I'm just like... Damn, these people did it right. That's what I get for not searching the internet before I go. So for my anniversary, one of my gifts, uh, my wife got me a, a Yeti tumbler, a 32 ounce one. So now I'm like, man, I got like, I, I can't wait to break this motherfucker in, man, because I'm gonna get fucked up. Yeah, man, I was hating when you texted me that pic of that Yeti, <laughs> and I was like, man, it's gotta be sweet, man. <laughs> yeah man so it sounds like it's gonna be a good time man especially when it's all inclusive you don't have to worry about anything you could just eat what you want to eat drink what you want to drink and just hang out yeah absolutely i uh i mean the yetis i had a generic one that i bought at home depot for like 10 bucks then things already it's it's not even been a year and it's already chipping and I mean, it does the job it just looks ugly as fuck these yetis they guarantee it not to chip they guarantee it to a Keep it cold for like 24 hours or keep it hot. Um, it's, I mean, it does everything. It's like, it's the shit right now. Nah, cool, man. Yeah, you got to keep them drinks cold, man. That's that's how they're the best, man. Yeah, so it's been, uh, like I said, it's pretty sweet. I can't wait to break it in. Um, one of the biggest things I'm like, oh, man, she's like, we should get these things engraved. But I, I feel like that's too over the top. Yeah, man. I, I think there's still places that do that. I, I thought I saw some place in the mall uh, that does engraving that little things or yeah. happening things. I forget what that store's called. Yeah, those things are expensive. They charge you by the letter and the size. It's like it's like uh, uh, the first letter is like the most expensive one and the rest are like five bucks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple engraved things. Uh I got a like a beer. What do they call those? Like those big like. The steins. Yeah, yeah. I got one of those with my my name engraved in it, uh, and it's pretty sweet. And then I got a, a sh- like um those things the winos carry uh, the flasks. I got one of those with. Flask? Yeah, I got a flask with my name on it. Damn, uh, yeah, I, I've only used it once, man. I took it to a wedding once. I put a little SoCo in it so I could just be taking a couple shots while I'm at the wedding. And, uh, yeah, that was the only time I really used it. But I, I kind of noticed that it's too big. Like, it's one of those full-size ones. And it'd be sweet if I had, like, a mini one that's only about, like, half. I think that'd be perfect for, like, a single-use Yeah, no, nah, man. You know me, man, Andy, man. I need to have the best of the best, man, all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, another thing we just got recently was, uh, well, not recently, but we've had it for a while. We've been expanding little by little is uh, Alexa. Right. We've been having her around the house, and 
been trying to get a little smart here. You know what I'm saying, Andy? I don't know. It's kind of scary, man. I, I was hoping you say Alexa's dumb or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, with, with all the recent reports, it does kind of freak me out, you know. But I try not to get too paranoid because it is a little convenient um, just because I, I could really dig music at any time, you know, like I'll, I'll be walking around and I'm just like, you know, I feel like listening to Jam Onin and I'll tell Alexa, hey, man, play some Jam Onin and she'll, man, she'll drop that beat, man. Hell yeah, man. That's all I tell her. It's like Alexa, zoom, zoom, zoom in the boom, boom. And man, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep. Yeah, man. But then uh, I tell her like, "Hey, give me some R. Kelly," and she's like, "You want me to piss on you?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, stop." <laughs> yeah, but digital, man. It's digital. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, we've been uh, uh, popping some Alexa. We got one in, in the bedroom, you know, just to hear us in case we're laying down and we know what we want to hear. And then we got. We got one in the kitchen, and then we got one in, like, the family room. Does Alexa ever start, when you start doing that, does it just start playing the music automatically without you telling it? Nah, man, that'd be sweet. I'm going to email that. I'm going to email the Amazon guy. What's his name? Oh, Bezos? (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to tell him to put that update in there. But yeah, man, it's it's been expanding because um, Alexa used to only listen to her name, and that's the only time she would listen. But now, like, there's a lot of reports that she's listening all the time and recording, and then she stores it. And then I, I guess some lady just actually uh, she found her conversation got emailed to one of her friends by accident, and she's just like, I didn't even know it was recording. It just Alexa, you bitch! How can you me? Yeah, I know. But it, it is convenient, man. I was uh, cooking a steak like a month ago, and uh, Chef Ramsey said you got to flip it over every like minute and a half or whatever it was. And so I would, while I'm cooking and I'm, you know, throwing in the, the garlic and butter and all that good shit, you know, I'd be like, Alexa, minute and a half timer. And then boom, it, it would just go off on, on, on point. And so everything was just voice acted. So it was pretty sweet and convenient. I mean, I got to admit, I I don't have the fastest of internets and I don't have all these smart features. I mean, this is an older house, but I would imagine with a newer house or a house that has some more of these smart features with like the thermostats that are connected Wi-Fi with uh, the lights that are connected Wi-Fi, security systems, stuff like that, that are a little more smart. uh, It would benefit people like that a lot more and where... I don't have those things. I mean, the the most I have is uh, Alana got me one of those uh, sockets uh, for the lights, for like um, the in um, the light bulbs. So I I have like two of those in the house. So if I tell, hey Alexa, turn on the living room light, it'll turn on that light. Uh, so so that's pretty convenient. But yeah, but with uh, the new uh, Amazon um, buying out Ring, that company Ring that puts that camera on your on your doorbell for your front door. I'm thinking about maybe picking up uh, one of those security systems. Uh, maybe when uh, Amazon Days comes up, I think it's coming up next next week or next month or something like that. So I'm probably gonna keep an eye out for maybe one of those security cameras by Ring. Yeah, man, but, you know, every now and then, especially that back door, uh, I get kind of worried. Um, we don't have central air, so I got air conditioning in, in my room. So, you know, even though the dog is loose around the house and, you know, every now and then I'll hear the dog barking and, you know, going to make a ruckus because, you know, there's some kid walking across the street. Uh, it does help me sleep at night, but, you know, you just never know. Uh, and I think uh, maybe having a security camera, you know, motion detector and all that bullshit, you know, it might make things a little safer. Yeah, 
No, nah, no, nah, but you know, there's bad shit happens everywhere, man. Sometimes you turn on the news and they're just like, man, I didn't. This is a peaceful neighborhood. I don't know what's going on. These people just came out of nowhere. So you know, you always got to be ready. You always got to have. You always got to have your Bible in one hand and the peace in the other, getting ready to take care of anything that comes. Yeah, what happens if you're like, your Wi-Fi don't work? Right? Yeah, I know. Then I'm screwed, man. I'm like, hey, yeah. dial up. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Yeah, so it's just. It looks, it looks cool, but I'm like, man, I'm worried about all that stuff because I always feel like it's recording when it's not supposed to or listening. Well, they say smart TVs do the same thing, you know, when you got those smart TVs that got Netflix and they're always connected to the Internet, uh, that those be listening all the time and laptops with uh, cameras and, you know, webcams and stuff like that, that they're always watching. So I I don't know if you just put your head in the sand uh, or in the hole like ostriches and, you know, you just don't worry about it or if you're just paranoid and just stay off the grid. you mentioned you got alexa and to me my wife kind of brought it up around black friday because i think that they had a lot of sales or the google home one it wasn't the amazon one and i'm just like i don't really want that in the house i, I don't even want an ipad man because i don't want them to even though my iphone already knows where the hell i'm at all the time and i'm pretty sure sending stuff to steve jobs and shit even though he's dead he's probably knows where i'm at at all times i just i get, I get worried about stuff like that man no, I hear you. Me too. Uh, but man, it, it just breaks you down like I pass. Like you mentioned, I, it was a long time I didn't have it. And then I was just like, man, I'm just tired of paying double the toll. Um, so I finally broke down and got I pass a few years ago. But I'm surprised you haven't gotten, especially with your new commute. There's sometimes tolls you're passing. I, I would have broken down and got I pass right away. All right. But yeah, man, uh, I know Junior uses it for homework, like um, uh, actually to cheat. You know, he'll be doing some, you know, what's the what's the capital of this? And he's, you know, trying to figure it out. And then he just ask Alexa and Alexa will tell him. Yeah, I mean, when you ask it something that it's just like beyond its capabilities or whatever, um, it, it'll it'll say no or it'll say you know I can't do that or. But yeah, man, uh, it's it's pretty sweet. Um, I, I I would imagine it'd be more useful to somebody like I mentioned that's more connected, and uh, it's got a lot more features in the house so that you could. You know, tell it, you know, turn up the temperature or uh, uh, turn on the, the camera in the front. They even got those um, Alexas with uh, the video screens. I forget what they're called. But they got like a little like tablet size screen. And so you could ask it to bring stuff up like, hey, play a YouTube clip from, uh, you know, the Usher concert or whatever. And then it'll pop up and, and you'll be able to see it. Yeah, I got three of them. Um, I know it gets on Alana's nerves because uh, we're either using her or we're not using her at all. And uh, usually Junior forgets about it. But as soon as he hears me using it, he's like, oh, yeah, we got Alexa. So everywhere he goes, he's like, hey, play this song. And then he'll be jamming out there and then it'll finish. And then he'll go into the next room that we have and it'll be like, hey, play this song. And my wife's just like, hey, can you stand still? Don't walk around the whole house turning on every Alexa playing music. He's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. But it, it's pretty sweet. Uh, the the few times I've had like um, family over for, for dinner, for lunch or whatever uh, to come eat at the house, I've turned on Alexa and turned on the music and it's, it's cool to control it. You know, you're just, you know, chillaxing with a beer or whatever, you know, and everybody's kind of laid back and you know, you're playing whatever kind of music. You could change the mood, play something a little more upbeat. You know, it's all on the fly. 
And I mean, in granted, you could probably do it on your phone if you got some Bluetooth thing and type it in. But it does feel sweet, you know, to to be able to do stuff uh, voice acted without having to touch anything or do anything. Once in a while, I use Siri, but I know Siri doesn't compare to Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how often do you use those features on your phone, like uh, the GPS? Do you have that on on your phone and yeah, location I finding? Yeah, I do use that because I, I live very far now. <laughs> yeah, you got to always map, you know, how to get into Ohio. and. I still use, I still use MapQuest once in a while. Is that normal? Damn, MapQuest? No, that's an old one. Now, usually I just use Google Maps or, or the one that Apple gives you. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, the Siri, I use it. Um, but I know, like I said, we talked about it. And I was like, man, I don't want Alexa. I don't want the Google Home one. I don't want. I don't know. If, does Apple have one? I don't even know. But I'm, like, I'm not interested in any of that. Yeah. No, you know, sometimes you, you do have to kind of break down and just get some of those high techs or sometimes you just got to, you know, keep it real. Like uh, the other day, my shower broke, man. And um, I had to break down and watch some YouTube videos to, to see how to fix it. And then I called this guy that usually does some work for me around the house. And uh, he came over and, and looked at it. Really? And yeah, I, I, I felt kind of, you know, non-manly doing it i don't know how, I don't know how you would say it but no nah, no nah, trust me man when i can i try to fix it on my own i mean i i think i mentioned in this podcast and i know i text you a picture andy but it was a few years ago that my garage door retention spring broke and it felt good fixing it man i, I had called somebody for a quote and it was like some ridiculous amount and i'm like holy shit and I went to Menards and I saw the spring itself only ran this much. Um, and I started watching YouTube videos and I'm like, yeah, I think I could do this. I think I could do it. And then I tried it. Uh, and my wife yelled at me afterwards because all the videos start off with this is dangerous and you can get killed. So be careful what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. But I. But I don't know what the shower, uh, with plumbing, water, stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know. All I need to do is try to be loosening a pipe or something. The thing burst, and then it just becomes a bigger problem. Yeah, there's so I, things you got to learn how to tackle on your own. Like, uh, I've messed around with some of the plumbing, but it all depends. If, like, where I hesitate, if it's inside the wall, then I ain't fucking with it. Yeah, no, I hear that. So I called this guy over, a uh, real nice guy. Uh, he works like in heating and air conditioning, um, like full time. So he came over and he looked at it. And as soon as he looked at it, he was just like, dude, I can do this job for you if you want. But to be honest, I'll just be taking your money because this is so easy. You could do it yourself. And he's like, look, he's like, you got an adjustable wrench. And I'm like, yeah, here you go. He loosened this one um, uh, like a cap. And as soon as he loosened that cap, he's like, look, this whole thing comes apart. It pulls out. He's like, just take this to Menards, uh, look for a replacement, and just put it back together the way you saw me take it apart. And that's it. That's all it really is. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, man, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, if I if I had that ghetto money, man, then I, I might have still done that. Been like, yeah, you know, thanks, man, but uh, can you do it for me anyways? But no, I ran out to Menards the, the following day. And I took that piece with me, and uh, with the help of the guy that worked there and uh, Junior, I actually found the, the replacement piece and, and, and brought it back home. Now, the quick question, everybody out there, I'm pretty sure wants to know. Now, did you do it by yourself, or did you have uh, your son or your wife helping you, or your boss and mom uh, telling them what to do? No, uh, since... It was uh, one of those hot days, um, and, and I was actually looking forward to a shower, and we, we, we were down with our shower for two days, 
So I had gone already, uh, you know, it was already on the second day without a shower. And I'm just like, man, I got to take a shower today, man. I, I, I can't wait no more. Max, you can go as maybe one day without a shower, two days. You're, now you're pushing it. You're pushing that funk really to a bad area. So as soon as I got home, I, I started taking all the, the stuff out that, that I had bought at Menards. Uh, and I started doing it myself and my son, he kind of came over and I think he looked, saw that look on my face of desperation and he's just like, I'm getting the hell out of here. And he took off. But now I started, uh, putting it back together and it, it went to get back together pretty easily. Just like the guy mentioned, uh, fastened it down and, and that's it, man. I, I, I told my wife, Hey, get up here. And she came up and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go turn on the water. Cause I had turned off the water for or the hot water for the house and i'm like hey uh, come come up here because i'm gonna turn on the valve and uh let me know if it starts leaking like a sieve or or if everything looks fine and yeah turn on <laughs> yeah leaking like a sieve. i don't even know what a sieve is but i know plumbers and and people in the industry say that like when something it just keeps spewing and there's no way to shut it off I think she got the gist or at least interpreted what I meant. Uh, but yeah, I turned down the water and everything was cool, man. It was just like the guy said. So hopefully the repair sticks and uh, nothing goes bad with it. But I threw on some silicone and I told my wife, I'm like, man, I'm going to give that thing a good, you know, 15 minutes. But man, I got to go take a shower. I'm like, I, I got to go to work the next day and I, I don't want to be stinking like a foot. So. Yeah, let it dry up a minute, and then I took a shower, and, man, it felt great. I was just like, man, this feels good to actually do something with your hands, fix it. It, it finally works out like, like it was meant to, you know, not like typical repairs where you get halfway through it and something doesn't fit or you're missing a part or you're missing a tool. So I was really happy and grateful, man. No, nah, no, nah. everything, everything was pretty simple. Like the guy mentioned, uh, I did call him up and thanked him. Uh, I bet you he, he saw me on the call ID and he's probably like, man, what the hell does this guy want? He couldn't even change a faucet. What the hell is he calling me? But, uh, yeah, I called him up and I told him, Hey, I just want to say thanks, man. Cause, uh, he really helped me out. You know, sometimes when you call these techs guys or, or, or tech to come out and, and do some repairs, man, it's like a hundred bucks just to come out and look at it and, you know, assess what the problem is. And man, it could get costly really quick. Now, uh, the, 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 the repair, the cost of the repair, uh, was it under 50 bucks? Um, well, what I bought was a little over 50 bucks, but that's only cause I bought these extra pieces just in case, like, um, it came with like, the piece that I needed replaced came with like an extension rod, and um, I'm like, ah, mine looks in somewhat good condition. I think I could reuse it, but my wife's like, well, you better buy it just in case. So I got a replacement, and then she's like, well, while you're fixing the hot water, do you want to fix the cold water? So then I bought the cold water pack, uh, and then she's like, well, while you're changing this, do you want to change that? So by the time I walked out, it was like 60 bucks worth of stuff that I walked out with. But uh, after finishing the job, I, I packed up all the stuff that I didn't use, and uh, I'm planning to take it back and probably get like twenty dollars in credit. So yeah, it'll probably be under fifty when it when it's all said and done. In any of that time, I'm just trying to gauge here. Your all right. Thought process. Like, did you outweigh like fifty bucks in parts, and the guy might charge me like a hundred bucks or something? Or did you ever decide, like, should I just call my dad up and go, Dad, can you do this for me? You know, my dad, he's he's pretty cool about uh, coming and helping me. But he's sort of in the same boat as me. He was one of them guys that, well, let me call, you know, Joe Schmo up to come fix this. Or let me call your tío because he knows about this. Or uh, ese David, he knows about electricity, right? Call him over so he can come help us fix this. 
So uh, he he's also one of them guys that let's let's call somebody to come take care of this for us. That is my mentality to get over. Like, man, fuck this. Just call this guy up. I don't care. Because I look at it, I assess it. I'm like, man, I'm gonna be fucking sweating if I start fucking with this thing. I can get it done, but is it worth it? And I'm like, nah, I'll just call this guy up. Yeah, I mean, I it it feels good doing things on your own. Uh, fixing things, uh, I know I feel uh, gratification from it, but I hear you, man. Sometimes you see something, you see a project, and you're like, man, this is a little above my pay grade. I don't really know what I'm doing, and if I do touch it, I'm just probably going to end up messing it up even worse. In that thought process, did you ever think about, like, man, I should call Andy up? No, nah, no. Nah. Now that you live so far, man, I, I can't call you on the whim and be like, yo, Andy, come over here. Bring a, a six pack and some cigarettes, and uh, we'll, we're gonna fix this. I would have gone, but I, I don't think anything would have gotten fixed that afternoon. Because yeah, we would have been fucking drunk already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when we were younger, uh, and things would break down. Like uh, famously, Oscar's head gasket on his car, and he's like, "Yeah, come on over, guys. Uh, help me change this head gasket." And we got there. We started drinking. Uh, at the time, we were smokers, so we were smoking. And I don't remember that head gasket being changed the whole time. No, and my cousin, man, he's, I mean, he's a mechanic. He went to school for it. He knows what he's doing. But sometimes back in the day, he had us, yeah, man, shit's easy. And uh, that turned into like a one-hour job, turned into like an all-fucking-night job. And we're driving towards Chicago because there's like a 24-hour auto store trying to get shit to make somebody get this his truck running and stuff and there was many a night like that a long time ago yeah i remember that now that you mentioned it i remember that time that i had to drive over to um what was it little caesars or where you guys go caesar land we went to caesar land yeah you guys went to caesar land and something broke on his belt or something his he couldn't get was these bolts to hold the fan and he snapped one i think he snapped one or two and the thing went in it was like all wobbly and shit and we had to go to some somewhere in the city to pick up some fucking bolts because every yeah by then it was like 11 o'clock at night what back then you know there wasn't like now like autozone and all this so there's a lot of them they're open 24 hours a day back in the day that that wasn't the case and we had to go, like, deep in the hood to get it. It was, like, in the west part of Chicago, like, the west side of Chicago, we had to go somewhere to get this shit. Yeah, it was the only one open that late. And I remember I had just started dating this girl, and it was, like, our third date or something. And Oscar called me, and he's like, yo, man, come on over. I need your help. My truck broke down, and I need somebody to give me a ride and blah, blah, blah. Or to pick up his kids and drop them off because he had his kids with him. Um and I remember telling this girl, yeah, it should be quick. Oscar said it'll be, uh, you know, like a 15-minute thing. And when I got there, uh, like you mentioned, Andy, it didn't work out that way. Yeah, so you're saying Oscar was cock-blocking you that night. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember what plans we had, but we did have plans like, hey, let's go to the movies or go eat or something. And then uh, when Oscar called, I'm like, yeah, we're going to get a little sidetracked. I'm going to go help out a buddy, but it should only be like 15 minutes, he said. And that ended up turning out being the whole night. And by the time we were done, it's like, yeah, you know, it's getting kind of late. Uh, she was living with her parents. So I was just like, all right, I'll, I'll take you home before you get in trouble. Now, wherever you guys dated after that, did she hate Oscar throughout your whole relationship? It was something that she never forgot, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite recall. I don't quite recall exactly how it worked out, but I I do remember that she never forgot uh, our third date. Or she was throwing it in your face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sort of even like uh, with my wife uh, Alana. It was like our second or third date, and Saul calls me out of the blue, and he's just like. Or at my parents' house. Yeah, we both lived at my parents at the time. He's just like, hey, man, let's uh, let's go to the um, the horse track. He's like, let's go to the horse track and, and go do some gambling, man. He's like, 
it's like it's rib night or something. I forgot what special it was, but it was like, some, yeah, it was something. And I was just like, uh, yeah, man, that sounds like a plan. Let's go, man. And I had a date with with Alana, my wife. Uh, we were just girl, you know, boyfriend girlfriend at the time, and we go over there. She still doesn't let me forget it, man. Every every now and then she brings it up. It's like, yeah, I can't I can't forget the how on our second or third date, he took me to the horse track races and. And then she claims that I ditched her, and I'm over there with with Saul. You know, we're all like drinking and smoking and and just hanging back. Yeah, you know, all, trying to get inside uh, tips on who's who's uh, whose horse is broken and this and that. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, Asao brought his girlfriend at the time, too. So, I mean, they're both hanging back and talking. Yeah. But still, uh, Alana makes mention of it every now and then. That is uh, that's fucking hilarious. And you're, do you, and you're, in hindsight, looking back at it now, do you think that was a good idea? Uh, I mean, I had a good time. But obviously, it wasn't the romantic evening maybe she was planning. Uh, so maybe she has a, a more of a sour point than, than I do. <laughs> that, I can't imagine. She says, just like, uh, okay, yeah, let's go. Yeah, because I, I think it was the first time she's ever been to a, a racetrack, so she didn't really know what to expect. I don't know if she thought it was going to be like, a, what's that famous horse race, you know, every year? Um, what was it? No, uh, the the big horse race where people bring out their big hats and you know, uh, I forget the name of. It. Is that what it is? I don't know. It doesn't sound familiar, but the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, so I don't know if that's what she imagined, you know, but uh, it was just like a. No, no, especially the one that we went to. It's one that's uh, kind of close here to our house, and it definitely does not look like the Kentucky Derby that people see on the TVs. Right. It's, uh, dude, that place, I don't know how we went there so much, you know, but uh, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, it was definitely a part of our um, of our childhood that, that was cool, man, because, uh, you know, we're barely 18, and we're thinking we're all cool out of high school and heading over to the track and just doing some gambling, uh, thinking we're big shots by placing $5 bets on horses, you know. You tried the, uh, the trifecta, right? You won a couple. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember getting into it. You know, at first we were just do straight bets, and then the more we got comfortable doing uh, trifectas, and I forget what the two one is, exactas uh, or something like that. Um, man, it's been so long since I've gone, but I remember for a while we were, we were going for quite a bit, you know, we we're doing it more often than, than not, you know, going to the, the racetrack for the horses and then going to the, even the dog races for the, the Greyhounds. We went to a couple uh, dog races up in, uh, in Kenosha. Kenosha. I don't know if that was still around. I know that Maywood is, it's, it had a good run, so, uh. Speaking of good runs, we got to wrap this up, Danny. Um, again, we want to thank you all for listening, and you can follow Freeform Network on Facebook and Twitter under Freeform Network. Send your questions and suggestions to ffnquestions at gmail.com. We want to hear back from you guys, especially after our long layoff. Uh, we want to hear your comments and whatever you guys think uh, we need to improve on, if any. I, I think we're pretty fucking badass. And don't forget to check out our... Podbean page, freeformnetwork.podbean.com. As always, if you guys remember, all our links are there. And uh, to all our other apps, iTunes, Stitcher, etc., uh, etc., et YouTube, we're on there too. So give that, check that out. And uh, this is uh, iCloud Andy here. and uh, Daniel over here. <laughs> so. We want to thank you guys for checking us out. Uh, we should have Noel relatively back soon, and we're going to have some articles. With, uh, we're going to try to provoke your guys' minds and way of thinking, and uh, we want to hear you know your thoughts on that. But uh, 
we want you guys to listen and uh, you guys have a good week and we'll see you soon That was cool, Dad.